Hi, I'm Charlie Thorburn. Welcome to Mordor Gun Dogs, where I'm continuing on with our series of uh, Labrador, young Labrador training. We're, we're having some really awesome cold weather up here in Scotland at the moment. And I'm looking at the weather forecast by the end of next week, it says it's going to get down to minus double figures, which would be, uh, it's my like dream dog training weather. So this cold weather is great. Now there's a few reasons. One, the ground's hard. Uh, you know, Scotland, we do get quite a lot of rain compared to maybe East Anglia or somewhere. It definitely rains a bit more. So we do have problem with wet, wet ground and stuff. So the hard, cold weather is just really, really good. The dogs keep clean and, um, and it's nice sort of, it's actually not too bright today, but we get nice sunny weather. So the last video you saw was, um, was Sooty, little black Labrador girl, about five months old. Um, and you saw her learning how to walk to heel. Uh, and we're just moving forward. So some of you might walk, watch these week to week. Some of you might be picking these up further down the line and going, oh, I want to train my Labrador. You might be in 2024, you might be in 2026. You know, who, who knows how long these videos will be useful to people, hopefully a long time. Uh, this guy here is Rum and Rum is a, is a seven month old Fox Red Labrador boy. Um, he's going to a really lovely family down in the south coast of England when he's trained. Um, He's not really going to be a gun dog. He's going to be more just a family dog, but we're still treat, going to train him to have some sort of gun dog skills. But at the moment, we're just moving on for you guys to see the stages of progression. So you saw Sooty. She still needed a little bit of help to try and keep her on the correct side. We were using the fences and things. This guy's just that much further on. So we're hoping that, you know, in this lesson, we might be able to go from on the lead to off the lead and show you some of our little tricks for that. So first thing as usual is engage him. Rum, heel. So he's walking to heel on the left. Now I'm still facing him, I'm still watching him, but I'm not doing it quite the way that, um, quite with a, a sort of enthusiasm and obsession that I was with a younger dog. I'm keeping an eye on him, but I'm starting to relax a little bit more because I know he's gonna get it right. There's two little things we would really start doing um, with a dog of this age. Um, varying our speed and direction, which we do with all, all the dogs. But the other thing we start to do is we start to do what my son calls the loop-de-loop, -loop, okay? And what the loop-de-loop -loop is, is we're walking along, we're walking along, and we just do a 360 degree turn. So we either turn into the dog or we turn with the dog. So I'm just gonna show you that. I'm gonna show you that right now from both, both angles. I'm gonna walk away, okay? Now he's bouncing along at my heel, and I'm just gonna turn into him quite tightly, and almost pushing him round with my knee, okay? So I'm gonna do that towards you. So as I get closer to you, I'm gonna do quite a tight turn. So I turn into him here. I'm not wanting to step on his toes, but I don't want him to know I don't wanna step on his toes. It's very much goes with uh, a lot of what I say when telling people about how to really be in charge of their dogs, because that's very much the way we do it. We're, we're looking to be in charge of the dogs. You are the bouncer, you are not the waitress, okay? But you're a good bouncer. You're not a bouncer who's up for a fight. You're a bouncer who's doing his job, controlling the crowd, controlling the club entrance, whatever. And he's doing a really good job and everyone goes, God, they've got great bouncers there, but they're just in charge. And they say, come to our nightclub. These are the rules, have some fun. We're all gonna be friends. If you cross the line, I'm definitely setting out at the beginning to show you that I'm in charge. What I'm not doing is saying, where would you like to go? Would you like to go over here? Would you like to go over there? Would you like to, would you like to sit in this table and people have, it's I'm in charge, this is what's happening, but if you, if, you, if, you, if you behave, we're all gonna be friends. So as I turned with Rum, I'm turning around and just, you know, every so often just gently pushing him with my leg, just to show him that we're going that way because I've chosen to, not because I've asked to, okay? Now we're gonna do the other way around, we're gonna do encouraging him to turn with us. Okay, so what we do now is we re-engage with him and we turn and we get him to follow us. Okay, so I'm gonna do that coming back towards you. Now the purpose of all of this is just to really get them to follow us and keeping their attention. Heel, so he lost my focus there. Okay, so I might do it again. Heel, heel, heel. You see, I have to work a little bit harder at that one. I, um, I have to really encourage him Whereas turning into him is more about me showing that I'm in, in charge and him going, all oh, right, yes, I'll do that. What I generally say is if a dog isn't doing the first one, they're not going to do the second one. If you're trying to walk into a dog and they're not moving out your way and they're not going, oh, sorry, I'm in your way. We're going that way now. And 
very much being sort of realizing and showing that you're the boss, then they're not going to do the following one because they don't really love you, they don't really care, and they certainly don't respect you, okay? I always say to people there's a fine line between fear and respect when you're training dogs. We don't want the dogs to be scared of us, okay? We don't want our kids to be scared of us. We don't want anyone who works for us to be scared of us. You don't want them to be scared of us, but we don't want them going and not caring either. We don't want them to just go, yeah, whatever, you don't count, I'm just doing what the hell I like. And we see so many people turn up here and they're like, oh yeah, we love our dog, he's such a great dog, but, and then they reel off a whole load of things and I'm like, what exactly is good about your dog? Sounds like he's an absolute pain in the butt. We want a dog that's with us, paying attention to us. You know, when we give them a tug, they go, sorry. You know, not one that ducks away and not one that just goes whatever and carries on doing the same thing. So we just got to get that balance right. Every time a dog does something wrong, we want to correct them. Okay, now, depending on how much enthusiasm they've got for doing something wrong, there's a scale. So just sniffing a leaf, seeing another person, seeing another dog up close, a rabbit, a sheep, you know, the scale gets higher and higher. If we, if the dog does something wrong at this level, what we're trying to do is just come in above and just shut down that thought process. So they sniff a leaf, we just give them a little tap on the bum, a little, hey, hey don't do that, and we shut it down. If they're seeing another dog that's bouncing around, they're like, oh, look at that, there's a pal to play with. We've got to be like, no, 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 you just calm down. If they're off chasing a sheep into the middle distance, we can't give them the same correction that we do when they're thinking about following a chasing leaf. It's just not realistic because their adrenaline and their enthusiasm is just so much higher. So the analogy I use to people is it's like putting your foot on the brake of a car. When you're taught to drive, you don't get told, oh, if you put 15 pounds per square foot of pressure when you're doing 30 miles an hour in a flat, oh, blah, blah, blah. You just don't get told that. You just get told, put your foot on the brake and you figure it out and you get in a different car and the brakes are more sensitive or they don't work so well and you figure that out. Now I've got a, a, I've got, um, I've got a couple of cars. Uh, I've got a ranging from a series one Land Rover that you've literally got to like put your foot out like the Flintstones to try and get the car to stop. And I've got a Tesla that you don't even have to use the brake, it sort of stops itself. I have to adjust my driving depending on what I'm driving. I have to adjust my correction of a dog depending on the dog, depending on the day, depending on what the dog's done, right or wrong. There's so many variables you can't be told, oh, how hard do I tug them on the lead? Or, or, or how much do I growl at them? Or how much pressure do I put on them? It's changing all the time. You just, what you've got to do is you've got to learn to read your dog, okay? So that's the key thing. Anyway, a little rum here. We're going to move on with a bit more training. So we've done some on the lead training. We've done healing off on the lead. We've done some loop to loops. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take the lead off and I'm going to just wrap it around his neck so that I've got both ends. So to him, it feels like the lead's still there, okay? So we walk off at heel, and I'm trying to keep the lead loose. I'm having to bend down, because I'm a bit too tall to do this. I'm having to bend down. Now, as I'm walking along, if I have to give him a correction, I still give him a correction. But at some point, I just let the lead go, okay? He's got hold of it, that doesn't matter. But at some point, I let the lead go, and he thinks he's still on the lead because he can still feel it over the back of his neck. It's still sort of there. He's got it in his mouth. He's being a bit silly. Okay. Now the next thing I do is just trail the lead on his neck. He's being a, he, he wants to, he's one of these dogs. He likes to take himself for a walk. Ah, 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 ah. We're not going to be too tough on him, but we don't want to encourage it. So you saw, I just had the lead looped around his neck like that. And then slowly, slowly, when they're not being silly like this, we obviously can't do this. We can't do this when they're being silly like this. But when they're not being silly, that's the sort of first stage of it. And then we drop one half of it. So if Rum toes the line so you can see, I probably should have used a different color lead or used this on a black dog. But I slowly, slowly allow the lead and I'm gonna do it over my arm instead because, because Rummy's being silly. So I start off with the lead like that, okay? Then I drop the bottom half, which goes underneath the neck. Okay, and as I'm walking along, slowly, 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 I, I reel the lead in, and the dog hasn't actually realized that they haven't got the lead in anymore. And the reason we do this is because so many people, they teach their dog to understand when the lead's on and when the lead's off, and I don't want my dogs to be that fly. And you see them, they get to somewhere, they take the lead off, and the dog's like, oh, the lead's coming off, and they're off into the distance. 
And what we want is the dog like lead on, lead off. It doesn't really make any difference. I just stay here. So we want to think about that. And, and all of this training we're doing, this is all, this is not for those of you who've got a dog that's a hooligan, okay? We've got some videos out there already for, for some of that. This is for those of you who are buying a puppy in the spring or who've just got a puppy or a young dog. And you're starting with a nice, innocent, you know, blank canvas. And you're, you, you're going to try and avoid all the mistakes and the pitfalls that people make. This is what this is for. So some of these techniques, they're not going to work on your hooligan dog that tows you off down the street. This just isn't going to work at the moment. But, but this is really for a nice young dog like Rum here, okay? So we're just trying to get them from, rather than taking the lead off and he hasn't got a lead on, we're taking the lead off, he's sort of got a lead on. Then as we walk along, we take the lead off without him noticing. Rum, rum, hey, 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 hey. Because we don't want him doing exactly what he's doing there. Hey, 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 hey. Rum, rum, yeah, yeah. And you see, as soon as he knows the lead's off, he's being a bit of a pain. Now, what I would say with this is that with Rum, he hasn't done enough walking to heel on the lead to quite be ready to take the lead off. So we're not, maybe I'm trying to jump the gun here um, with him. Uh, I'm also trying to do it while I'm talking to you on the camera. Rum, here, yeah, yeah. But that's a little telltale sign that I'm not ready to do what I'm trying to do with him. So what I would do in, in this lesson, because I know he can do this, I would just go back and I'm just going to do a couple of circuits with me on the lead, which Ian can speed up or he can delete from the video, just to get him back onto focus of we're walking to heel rather than his sort of silliness of holding onto the lead and trying to do a retrieve. Heel. Now, I've taken the lead off and I haven't actually done with him what I've been trying to do because he's just being silly with it. So this is a little method that maybe isn't going to work for rum today or isn't going to work for rum at all. But because I've taken the lead off while we've been in motion rather than making a big thing about it, I've managed to continue to get him to walk to heel off the lead. Now, I'm not going to go through that gate and head off into the middle distance and try and continue to get him to walk to heel because that's, too, uh, that's going to be too much for him. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to reward him with a retrieve. Another thing we're going to add in at this stage as well is every time we stop walking, we should get him to sit. So run, heel, heel, sit, heel, heel, sit. Now you'll notice when I take the lead off, my body language reverts back to how it might have been with a younger dog because I'm trying to keep his engagement and keep him focused on me. Sit, good boy, sit. and keep him focused, sorry, keep him focused, engaged on me. He's trying to kind of nibble at the lead. Get rid of the lead, put it in your pocket. Okay, heel. But what we've got is a little dog who's, who's really getting the heel, the heel command quite nicely. Heel, heel. But if I take my eyes off him, I'm gonna lose him. Heel, sit. Good boy, good boy. And then his reward, is a retrieve out. Now I'm just starting to steady him on the, on the, steady him to retrieving, but I'm not gonna cover that now. I'm gonna cover that in another video because I don't wanna overcomplicate things. I don't want you rushing off to do steadiness when you haven't even got heel work done. Always, always key with, people, with everybody training a dog. Get one thing done really right, really well, get it correct, get it done properly, then do another thing. Get that really, correct and properly done while practicing the first one before you move on to the third one. And it's about building up, building up, building building blocks, okay? Make sure the bottom ones are stable, put the next layer on. The next layer is stable, get the next ones on. You're always going back to check on all the other layers. You're not just going, oh, I did that, I did that six months ago. I've moved on to other things. We're always going back to healing. We're always going back to sitting and staying. We're always going back to steadiness. We're always going back to sitting on the whistle. We're always practicing all these things with all of, our, all of our dogs. One, one of my real frustrations is, is people who, uh, and it's not their fault, they're, they're sort of, I don't know whether they're duped into it's the right word, um, but they go to puppy classes and they get a six week course 
And every week they go to the puppy class and they're told to do a different thing. So they're doing healing one minute a week, sitting and staying the next week, retrieving the next week and rolling over and playing dead the next week. It's all a load of crap, really. Because if you haven't got them walking to heal, you're not ready to move on to the next thing. If they're not walking to heel on the lead, they're not going to walk to heel off the lead. If they're not sitting at your feet, they're not going to sit and stay. If they're not sitting and staying, they're not going to sit at a whistle. You've got to get the foundation. And I think people are impatient. They want their dog to be trained now. And someone came to me the other day. They had a three month, they had a dog and it was six months old. But at three months old, they went to a puppy course for eight weeks. And they thought they trained the dog. It was a baby. It was so small, it didn't even remember any of it. We're doing some of the stuff we're doing now with Rum, who's now off digging molehills because um, he's bored, which is fine. He's having his playground bit. But we're doing this stuff over and over and over again, every day, once a day, twice a day if we can. If we have a few days we can't do it, it's not going to matter. But we're repeating it until it's so ingrained in their mind they don't know any different. We're not moving on to complicated things. We're not moving on to like fun stuff teaching them tricks until we've got all the basics. I can't emphasize enough, training a dog is like building a house, okay? You may not have plans to build a castle, but if you build a really good, strong foundation and you put all the wire and the concrete and everything you need to, and you map it all out, and it's all level and it's all great, and then you go, oh, I'm gonna build a good story. We build another really good story of our house. You can keep building more stories because you've got that good base, and every story is as good as the base, you can build a castle. You might not be your plan, okay? But why go and do half a job when they're young and go, oh, well, it doesn't need to be a gun dog. It doesn't need to be this, it doesn't need to be that. Why not? Why doesn't it need to be that? What you should be aiming for is the best. If you don't reach the pinnacle top of the castle because actually, you know, the dog's not able to do it, you're not able to do it, whatever else, at least you've set out your goals to get there in the end. And that foundation is with a dog, with a Labrador especially, is this healing, this calm, this patience, all these nice little manners. And this little guy here will go on and in, in a year or two's time could be, you know, could be a really, a really amazing dog. He'll never have to go on a lead for the rest of his life once he's kind of reached that point. He'll never have to be told off or do anything wrong because he just doesn't know how to do it because he's been so well drilled into doing the right thing that the wrong thing just becomes irrelevant. So... You get out what you put in, and this is the perfect prime place to do this. A young dog who's all very capable of getting up to mischief, and we just harness that enthusiasm and get him to do things for us. Um, so I hope you um, have all learned something, and we will continue on these videos, and we'll see you next time.